Hello everyone, welcome back to Fallout, this is episode 2, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit about the game interface as you see it here. Hopefully I will get the majority of my explanations done this time so we can get on with the game. As you can see we're in a fairly large cave, having emerged from the vault. We know our mission now, as explained in the intro, which is to find the water chip, and we have about five months to do it in. So, you can see this little red hex moving around, and basically this system works on a hex-based movement system, so, as you can see, clicking around, I move on the hex grid. Now, if I was to, that's all that, this, this, that's all this cursor does, it's just the movement cursor. If I was to right-click, I get the interaction cursor. Now, with this, there is a menu when I hold down the mouse button. As you can see there, I stopped over something and the default action button pops up. If I was just to left click, I'd get the default action. So, for that pile of rocks, which is highlighted in the bottom left down here, you see rocks. Yes, I do, yes. If I was to left click on it, it would give me a more detailed description of those rocks. So, we've got a large pile of rocks. They look indigenous to the, re to the region. Fair enough. So now we know those rocks belong here. That's great. If I was to mouse over this, we see a cave rat. No, 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 no. Oops. Nearly. <laughs> we don't want to talk to the cave rat. It's not going to... So that's an, that's an example of the, um, the contact sensitive thing changing. Uh, as you can see, that bony looking corpse there, that skeleton, it changes to a hand icon. Uh, let me show you what we've got here. So, if I hold down the mouse button on something, anything, we get that. So we can't do anything with this really other than look at it. This button here is our inventory so we can possibly interact with it with something in our inventory. This is a, a, a very simplistic inventory, it's not the full inventory screen, it's the interaction one. So, um, Or maybe we can... I'm not doing a very good job of this. What was I clicking on? Ah, okay. Maybe we can interact with our skill decks which appears down here and is controlled by this button ordinarily. If I was to select one of these, it gives me another icon to target something with. Okay. Um, incidentally, these buttons here, sneak, lockpick, steal, all those, they correspond on a 1 to 8 on the keyboard. So I can hit sneak there and I'm in sneak mode, which makes me... I have to walk in sneak mode. There's a, a Later on there's a perk that lets you run in sneak mode, but um, for now I have to hold down the shift key and walk everywhere in sneak mode. I can hit 1 to give me the sneak mode as well on the keyboard, in which case, as you can see, if I walk, it'll stay in sneak mode. It's not really important at now, uh, for now, but let's move on. So that's the context sensitive menus there. There are some others as you've seen. There's the grab, and there's the... if I can latch on... there we go. No. And then there's the mouse. So I want to look at the rat. She looks unhurt. What you'll probably find is every single rat in this cave is female. For some reason. I don't know why that is, but anyway. You can see we can interact with this. Um, I'm not going to. I don't think it does anything. I'm not going to, he says, as he clicks it. It does not accept my access code. So basically, they've, they've, they've pushed me out. They've locked me out. I'm stuck doing this whether I want to or not. Let's have a look at this. We'll look at the bones first. As you can see, we see bones. Examining it closer, you see Ed. And Ed's dead. Well, I should hope so. Otherwise, he's probably going to be quite uncomfortable. He seems to be wearing, if I turn that way, I'm wearing Vault 13 jumpsuit sort of thing. And he seems to be wearing something very similar. So, we don't really know when he was pushed out to do this uh, job. As far as we're aware, nobody's left the vault, so why is he there? More to the point, how can we uh, identify him as Ed? It's never explained in the game, I don't think. So we're interacting with him now. We've got a, an inventory swap screen, taking the items from him, using that little hand icon there. Again, I've got an, if I right-click, I've got an interaction cursor that lets me examine things. And with that, again, it's context-sensitive. Yes, I can look at the super tool set. It's got loads of little tools in there. It's not overly useful in this game, but yeah, 
I'll keep all of it. With the pistol, however, I've got this. It unloads it. I'll do that. And you can see that's gone from uh, 72 to 84. And the pistol's gone to the top of the inventory. I can. <laughs> I can I'll, I'll reload that in a minute. I can reload the pistol from the screen if I've got it down there. I'm not sure how to... Will the mouse... Yeah. Okay, the mouse wheel. Not when I've got something holding. Okay. Right. Enough of that. It's becoming waffly. So. That's how we interact with things on the basic level. Now. Moving on down here. What we've got is. Our, our main interface. As you can see we've got a description. Little text window here. Tells us lots of things. And you'll see things popping up there. As we move around the environment as well. Um, as I get down here you'll see something popping up. Um, any damage I do to enemies in combat will pop up there. It will just give an overall description of what's going on in the game. And I kind of like it. Um, it's useful. Um, as you can see, every time it updates, you get that little booping noise. So, yeah, that's not too distracting. It's not something you tend to notice. Um, I've explained the skill deck system here. I won't go into the skills just yet. Most of these we won't use, but you can see they've got a percentage chance to work next to them. Our repair skill's 45. We've got a 45% chance of repairing something. Straightforward. This little box here that's covered up opens up during combat, which I'll show you shortly. We have 28, 28 hit points, and our armor class is 8. Uh, that's our chance to dodge. These little LEDs here will light up when I initiate combat, and now there are action points. The lit LEDs are the number of points we have, and I think we've got 9 as standard, which I can check by clicking the chat button there. Here we are, the character screen. As you can see, it's a very familiar screen. It's very similar to the last one we had where we created the character. Um, ordinarily, these screens would be full screen. At the, at the native resolution of the game, um, it would take over the screen. But because of the high resolution patch, screens like this remain fairly small compared to the actual game screen. Um, it makes for a different Fallout experience, but it makes for difficult reading for me. So I'll do what I can with this. It's not, it's not too bad. As you can see here, there's our stats as we chose them. Um, perks, we've got none. Traits, I chose none. Karma, none. We've done nothing. That will hopefully change, and I'm aiming for it to change in the positive, but we'll see. Kills, well we've killed nothing yet, but as we kill things, we'll get a tally of the different types of things we killed and how many of them we've killed. We've got no experience. In a thousand experience, we will reach level 2. That was straightforward. This little plus and minus, if we've got skill points, we can spend them. We'll get those when we level up. You can print to a file, uh, which... If I click on this, it will print the character sheet out to a file. I'm not really sure what that was used for. I've never used it myself. I don't know if anybody can highlight that for me and uh, let me in on that little secret. But uh, as far as I'm aware, it's it's pretty useless. I don't know why it's there. So anyway, we're done with that screen. That's the character screen explained. Let's go into the inventory screen because I've kind of shown you a little bit about this. You can see we're not wearing any armor. Um, as we change armor, I think you'll see you'll see a change here, our resistances to certain stuff will go up and down depending on the armor we're using, our armor cost will change we've got no items in either hand uh, I can change that, I'm going to put a pistol in item 1 uh, this ammunition is armor piercing it's not very useful for the start of the game uh, most people do not have armor that I need to use this on um, at, at the immediate start I should say I'm not going to equip the knife in the other hand because as far as I'm aware our melee skill is not too not too bad actually. Our unarmed is slightly better. It might be worth me equipping the knife. I'll have a slightly lower chance to hit but the damage should be better than our unarmed damage. So let's, let's see, I can always drop it. So I will, I will equip the knife in that hand. Um, sometimes it's nice to leave that one blank so that you can holster weapons in towns, they quite often demand that, but we'll we'll get around that, it's not too much of an issue. I'm not going to equip armor piercing just yet in that pistol. You can reload by right clicking down here, as you can see we've got the pistol there. If I was to click that button it will swap to the knife. You can 
can see the character changes here as I as I click. So I'll swap back to the pistol. Pulls it out of his pocket. If I was to right click here, it goes through a couple of um, different modes. Single, AP5. So for me to fire one shot, center mass on a target, cost me five AP action points. If I was to take a more careful shot, which I'll get into in a minute really, I'm getting ahead of myself again comes of having no structure before you start these things but anyway um, it will open the VAT system if I use this it costs me one extra AP but I get to choose where I'm hitting usually a lower chance to hit specific points on somebody than, than firing center mass however I've got a reload thing there I can hit that it'll cost me two AP outside of combat it will cost me nothing and you can watch this little this little bar here on the right hand side fill with green 12 shots in there the other way of doing it, if I empty this again, that's the drop icon. I'm going to drop it. But if I was to drop it, you can see it's got 0 out of 12 10 mil AP. It's a 10 mil pistol. It's an interesting caliber. So it's got, if I look at it closely, it comes up here, not down here. And it's got 0 out of 12 shots of 10 mil AP. Well, it's not going to have 10 mil AP. It's going to have this stuff. And this stuff is Jack Hollow Point. It's. It's got more damage basically against the armor targets, and that's what we're going to be using for now. So I'll drag it onto the pistol, done, and as you can see, it's loaded 12 mil, uh, 12 out of 12 10 mil jacketed hollow point in the pistol. Stim packs, useful for healing. I'll try and take care of those, they are fairly hard to come by at the start of the game. Um, default 13, canteen. I will probably end up selling that, it is not much use in this game. Although it is if you're playing hardcore Fallout New Vegas, etc. Um, that's that's all I've got to say about the inventory, really. Anything else will come along as we go, I'm sure. You see a little rotation of our character as he looks at the moment in his Vault 13 suit. This button here is the options menu. I can save, I can load, I can change my preferences, I can exit, all that kind of good stuff. The map. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I've, if I've missed this. Someone please point it out so I can make use of this because to me the map is entirely useless. I never get lost in this game. It never shows me anywhere I haven't been really. Um, if you have a motion scanner it will show up things moving about. You can switch from high to low for sort of, it'll pick up things on the floor like these stalag uh, stalagmites. Um, I don't, I don't see the point of it. Somebody please point out the point of it if there is one. Okay, right. On to the last button. I don't think I've covered the pit boy. I think it's the last button to cover, so we'll do with that one. Here we go. It is the 5th of December, 2161. It's um, 2077 or when the bombs fell. It's not quite 100 years. So the place is quite likely still radiated. It's still going to be a dangerous environment. It's 27 minutes past 7 in the morning. I can wait. No, I can't because there's there's a combat area, there's enemies in here. But if I normally I would be able to click on that and I would get a list of times I want to wait for. Um, Fallout 2 does it slightly better for, for a reason I'll explain what we'll come across, I'm sure, in a bit. Things to do today, or over the next 150 days, we need to get the water chip. Otherwise everybody is gonna die of thirst. Um, so that's probably probably something we should get on with relatively soon, although like I say we've got five months to do it in it gives us a relatively a relatively comfortable amount of time to to sort that out um, let's see what these buttons do status we only found vault 13 as we find more places and get quests in them we'll get a list here if we click on them we get the quests we need to find the water chip doesn't give us any more information about that I can't click on that we just need to find the water chip Okay, thank you. Buttons ripped out. Defective unit. I mean, you'd think sending us into the, the wasteland they'd give us a pit boy that was fully functional, but still. Auto maps. That is, it is the mapped area as shown by that map button. There's the cave entrance, as you've seen it before. Not too much use. Archives. These are the videos. So we've just watched the overseer. That's his briefing again. If I click on that, it will show that video again. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So, and there we go. There's the pit boy. 
Right. The next thing to show is combat. Okay. So, as I move through here, there's a chance that these rats, there we go, will see me and they will attack me. I'll try not to use the pistol, although I've got plenty of ammo. But as you can see, I can swing with this knife and I can thrust with this knife. Um, it's not too much difference in the damage types, as far as I'm aware. I'll take a look at that afterwards because it's something I've forgotten about. As I said, I'm not really a Fallout encyclopedia. Um, certainly not anymore. I used to know a lot more than I do now. I forgot quite a lot. But we've got nine action points. We can comfortably get in free swings. Let's see what chance to hit we have. 56. We should be able to hit with one of those and it should do the damage. We missed. We hit. Cave Rat was hit for four hit points. That's not too bad. One more hit. No. Nope. Now, we sequenced. That's why we get another turn. As you can see down here, we've got turn and combat. If I click combat, it will say, you can't. There's hostiles around. Try ending your turn. Well, we're not going to do that. But we can prematurely end our turn. If I was to do that, you'd see the armor class go up. I think it will go up by nine as well. Each action point gets added, that you don't spend, gets added to your armor class. Um, so you become much harder to hit. Uh, and, and, and it's the same is true with enemies as well. When you see this rat attack me, if it's got any action points left over, that 56 might drop to 55% chance to hit. But as you see, we've sequenced before the rat. The rat's attacked us, we've attacked, but we're faster than the rat. So we'll attack again before it gets a chance. So the game's not purely turn-based. It's not my turn, then your turn. And it dodged everything and then attacked us. Now it hit us for four hit points. Um, it's quite an aggressive little rat. And as you can see, it has dropped to 55%. I'm going to try one more turn of striking at this, this little thing. And there we go. We've killed it. It had two hit points remaining, and we killed it. Now I can end the combat. Sometimes you'll be able to loot. There's nothing on rats, surprisingly. You're not going to get coins. You're not going to get anything on rats. It's not going to be carrying ammunition. Um, it's a rat. I'll probably shoot my way out of the rest of this, uh, this place just to get out. But as you can see, we had a, a third... If I was to click on this, it will initiate combat on my on my terms. Here we go. You can see everything on the map visible within our, within our radius is highlighted red. All living things. So, it would be... The same would be true for friendlies on the map as well. They would be highlighted red. So don't take this as a... Uh, a sign of enemies, it's not, it's a sign of, of everything living on the map more or less, so whether it's hostile or not, it will highlight red. So we've got the normal movement with the cost and AP for getting there, now highlighted in the centre. We've got the interaction, which is of minimal use now other than looking at things. Later on, when you get certain perks, you can see exactly how many hit points are left on things like that. So. At the moment, it will just tell you they look unhurt or they look badly wounded, etc. So, this one, as you've seen me use, is the targeting icon. 3% chance to hit is not great. So, we won't do that, we'll get closer first. But that explains the basics of combat, I think. Combat over. Okay. Um, yeah, let's get on with it. I'll get out of here, I'll explain the next screen. Um, we'll trundle off to a wherever it takes us, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so rats wandered up. I can shoot it here for a 95% chance to hit. You will never, ever in this game get a better chance to hit than 95%. There's always that 5% chance of missing entirely. Um, but let's put a round in this rat, and there we go. Eight, Ten hit points. It's dead. No messing around. We've got the ammo to spare for now. That's how we're going to do things. Um, let's run around until that goes. I could have just clicked end turn, really, but still. This rat, let's get it targeting us. It's facing us. There we go. I didn't want to go too close, because you can get too close, and then it gets a free hit in on you. We'll shoot him as well. Here. Excuse me. Combat. And then, un unusually, there's one down here as well. Let's see if we can just run past it. No, of course we can't. 
so we're forced to use a third round. As you can see, you know, do you know what I haven't shown you? But I will show you now, if it lets me. It won't. It's the VAT system. We can't hit this guy. I'm going to have to get in a position where I've at least got some kind of chance of hitting him. Her. There's the VAT system. Now, as you can see, our chance to hit the body is 19, which is the same as it was if I was to fire um, centre mass using the 5 AP attack. Uh, so that's that's basically... If, if you're using VATs to hit the body, you're doing it wrong, because you may as well spend one less action point, and that's where it's going to aim anyway. There are chances to hit other parts, but I think, but uh, no. As you can see, we've got absolutely no chance to hit anywhere else. But each of these, each of these areas, have a certain effect on a critical hit. You can cripple legs, you can cripple paws, you can knock them to the ground with the groin and knock them out of the fight for a couple of turns. You can blind them in the eyes, and you can knock them out in the head. Um, if you, if you cripple their legs, their movements are stunted. They won't move as far. I can't remember if it actually takes action points off them or if it vastly increases the cost of movement in terms of action points, I think it's the latter. The paws, if they're wielding weapons, they won't be able to wield them. If they've got a two-handed shotgun or whatever, and you, you cripple one of their arms, as it would be for a, for a human instead of paws, then it he won't be able to wield that shotgun. He might have to pull out a, a gun or a knife or try and attack you with his fist, his, his remaining hand. You can cripple people entirely. Um, being blind obviously affects your chances to hit, and being unconscious affects your chances to do anything. So, VATS is useful and I like it, and I, I don't really understand why you would play this game without using VATS. Um, it's, it's just not very enjoyable for me, I suppose. I shouldn't really make judgments on other people's enjoyment, so we'll leave it there. Anyway, close combat. As I walk down here, you will see something pop up. There we go. So I'm just going to stand here a second. To the west, you can see a natural light. For the first time in your life, you are looking at the outside world. Well, wow. yeah, one of the contact sensitive menus lets me turn my character around. I don't know why. I can also look at myself. You see Isambard? You look at yourself for a while. Do you like what you see? You look wounded. Yeah, we've lost four hit points. Just gonna reload that. Go on. It's always good practice to reload after fights. Although, I, I'm gonna have to get back into that practice. Um, so, that's, that's the basics of combat. Um, all that's left of me to do really is explain this red zone. This red zone will take us outside of the map and it will give us another screen. Anytime you see red zones like this, it will take you outside of the map. There's another type of zone which is green, which will take you to an adjacent part of a map or a, a connected part of a map, which we'll, we'll see in the next area I intend to explore. Oh, yeah, once again, the screen is not meant to be this big, it's meant to fill the, the whole screen. So, right, this is the map screen. We know of two locations. We know of Vault 13, which is where we are here, our home, and we know of Vault 15, which is over here to the east and lies here. We can either click on Vault 15 there or we can click this little red button. I'm just going to click in the center. It can, once you're inside this green um, circle, you can enter a location. So let's have a look over towards Vault 15. Movement speed's dependent on terrain and your outdoorsman skill, I think. So as we're moving, we're moving pretty slow over this rough terrain. And then it should... There we go. We've got an encounter. It's fairly rare to get an encounter this early in the game. But it's not a bad encounter. Not all encounters are bad. So we've come across a travelling merchant and his guards. The guards are fairly obvious. The merchant's fairly obvious. Where his goods are, we don't know. We must have them stashed in his pockets. Let's have a chat. Well, hello, Wanderer. My name's... Duck. I'm going to say duck. It's probably not duck, but duck's amusing, so that's what it's going to be. I'm headed into Shady Sands to do some trading. Perhaps I can interest you in some goods. Shady Sands. Now, you can review your conversations here, 
not much use. Um, you can barter with the guy. Sometimes these text prompts will give you the same screen, but sometimes clicking on barter does you out of any um, discounts you may have you may have um, bargained with the guy. So if you've decided upon a discount and you and you click on barter, it can quite often it uses another system to open the barter menu, so you can quite often lose those discounts, and it's it's better to activate the barter screen through the text prompts. Um, and you also notice this little button here. Tell me about. You can do this with anybody who has a text a text screen like this, and you can ask them about random things. So let's ask him about. Oops. Um, let's ask him about Shady Sands. He doesn't know about Shady Sands. Obviously, it's limited. It's what the developers decided to put into the characters. So they only have a knowledge about things the developers thought about giving them a knowledge about. If that made any sense whatsoever. If you ask them about uh, random things, you're just going to get this. If the developers have decided, yeah, we want this guy to know about a particular text, you know, a, a word prompt, he'll tell you about it. And I'll show you a little bit about that in the next time. It's not much use, to be honest. There may be some things you can uncover that I don't know about. I've never really used it. Um, let me know if you if you know of, of, of any that I, I miss. Um, what I will say is, although you won't spoil the game for me, just be aware of spoiling it for other people. Uh, I don't want people, not that I'm going to get a million views on this, or, or any at all, but just on the off chance I do. Don't uh, just be aware of people browsing through the comments and picking up on on spoilers. Uh, this game is is a fantastic discovery for the first time you play it through. So I'm going to try and keep my spoilers to a minimum, just so anybody that's playing this from scratch uh, experiences it as as I did the first time, or as close as as possible. I do recommend that you play it through yourself, though. Right? Do you go to Shady Sands often? It's a normal part of his trade route. Okay, we can. We, he will take us there. First of all, I'm going to see what he's got for sale. I will go with him. He's not got very much. Stim packs. Let's see how much he wants for these. He wants three hundred twenty-six dollars. Now there is no dollars in this game. Um, there are bottle caps. If you play four out three, four out New Vegas, you'll be aware of bottle caps. Uh, basically, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, there wouldn't be many bottle caps lying around, so they've been adapted, adopted, as as a currency. I'm going to see how much you'll offer for one box of Mentats will fetch me 280 caps. Um, 305. We're going to have to offer, give this guy slightly more because we don't have caps to make the exact amount up on the barter value. We're going to have to give him slightly more. Probably not going to get it landing exact. 340, and you know, you know, I'll, I will go for that. It's, it's a, yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to get it much better than that. To be honest, I don't want to give my ammunition away. Maybe, nope, that's worse. And I don't think that's any use. So we'll do that. We'll offer that. It's a good trade. Let's talk to him again. Stim packs are useful. So yeah, let's go. It's going to take a day or so. Let's get to Shady Sands. Welcome to Shady Sands, stranger. Please holster that weapon while you are here. I won't holster the pistol. I'll take the knife out and I'll swap to the empty hand. So, here we are. We're at Shady Sands. The map screen's explained. Um, the text screen's more or less explained. What I'm going to do is getting on a little bit now. I'm going to leave it there. In episode 3, I'm just going to try and get on with the game. Other things might crop up, but hopefully it won't slow the pace down too much. And we'll, we'll just get on with playing Fallout. So thank you very much for your patience and watching. And I'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye.